Jim Nations is here today, and Jim is actually going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation today of uh, something that's usually always controversial, but we're just going to give you the facts. Uh, and Jim, I'm going to let you introduce it and start on it right away. We want to get as much in today as we possibly can. As a former Freemason, uh, I joined the Lodge in 1967. I was a young man, uh, had gotten out of church, moved from North Louisiana down here with a new job, making plenty of money, and got out of church. And, uh, and my dad and my grandfather and great-grandfather had been Freemasons as far back as I could, you know, get trace. And so it was something that, that I grew up with. And uh, so in that state of uh, mine and, and changing positions, I ran into a relative down here. and We were working together, and he would began to kind of probe me about it. And uh, so I was in the, wanting to put it off. This is something that, that Freemasons, you know, you, the, the people that are not don't know, that if you if you lose a, a member of your body, a hand, a foot, or a leg, or anything, you cannot be a Freemason. You have to be fully intact. That's part of it. So I not, didn't realize that. It, it has to be. That, that's, that's a part of it. So it's not open to anyone. Uh, so he said, if you was to happen to lose this, you know, down in, in work, the work we was doing with some of the very dangerous, he said, then you wouldn't be qualified. So I joined the lodge and uh, took my entered apprentice degree uh, in December of 1967. And uh, we'll be sh dealing with this as we go through showing you some of the things. And I'll be sharing some of my testimony uh, of what I learned. And, and But about, about six months after I was raised to Master Mason, which was... Uh, the middle of, uh, of February of 68, uh, God began to stir me. And, you know, and I, I wonder, you know, how this works. We don't understand every time what God does and how he operates, but we know that he does what's right. And so uh, it was in August of 68, he began to stir me and got me into a church with a very good pastor. And so as soon as I got into church, well, the Holy Spirit dealt with me about being in Freemasonry. And, of course, as we go through this, you will find that you're under a death oath. And they tell you in the lodge, uh, don't, don't, li don't listen to what people say on the outside. They don't like us. We've got more knowledge. We've got the light of, you know, the illumination of this mystery religion. And uh, so we'll tell you what we want you to know. And, and people that will say that, well, it's just a boys' club and the oath don't mean anything, they're lying. It does mean something. And we'll prove that point before it's over with. But again, in dealing with this, as, as he dealt with me, and, and I wouldn't go to the lodge, I wouldn't uh, get involved in anything, but I would pay my dues, which at that time was very little, $10 a year. But he would deal with me from time to time, and it wasn't a constant thing, and all I could do was remind him of all the good things that they do. You know, they do a lot of good things, a lot of good works. And... Uh, we know about all that, but, but the thing about it is, is they're depending, as most all or all religions are, is they're working their way and getting God in debt to them or obligated to them, whatever, and they're going to be saved by their good works, and we know that the Bible does not teach that. But there's a verse of Scripture that I want to kind of launch this with. It's in, the, it's in Revelation 17.5, and this is what we're going to be dealing with, and on her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and the Abomination of the Earth. So the mystery religions are all religions other than Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. The only mysteries that's been there, God has brought them out. He, and so the mystery religions, whether it's Catholicism, whether it's Mormonism, whether it's Freemasonry, whether it's any of the, the other religions, it's this this verse of Scripture covers every one of them because it's, it's mystery. The word mystery wasn't put there just to fill up some space. When you go into any of their writings, you will find that the word mystery is used over and over and over again. I mean, it's just... Uh, in the catechism, Roman Catholic catechism, the word mystery is on every page. Sometimes it's on there several pages. And dealing with Freemasonry, the word mystery is there because it's, he, he put that there for a reason. So this is what this verse of Scripture covers all of them. So as we, as we move into this, we're going we're gonna to start out. This is another uh, fallacy of, 
of Freemasonry. It says uh, in the first slide, as you can see, it's F and AM, which stands for Free and Accepted Mason. But it didn't start that way. Uh, they were stone masons, and you've heard the term uh, etched in stone. Well, uh, they left to tie all the, the popular people down through time as, and say they were masons. Uh, but unless they were stone cutters, stone hewers, and etchers or and recording history, they were not masons. Only the only masons up until, and we'll have the date in a few minutes, 17 or in the 17 early 1700s, they changed, and it become free and accepted masons. It meant you didn't have to be a part of the craft, uh, which also connects to witchcraft, by the way. But uh, this is why that. It's because of this being etched in stone, some of them had to be very educated and some of them had to rub shoulders with people in power positions and kings because they actually, they, they, and as we move on, let's move on uh, to, to this one. Uh, as we get to it, it'll change, hopefully it'll change in a minute. Uh, there it is, okay. Uh, but in dealing with this and, and the stone masonry, they, they built the cities, they built the walls, they built the beautiful cathedrals. Uh, but uh, they also probably, as far as we're concerned, the most important thing that they did was they recorded history because in the old times, the wars and the different tragedies and, and the, the burnings of stuff, if God would have allowed paper to be invented then, they would have, we would have lost it all. But because he knew that it wouldn't, there's a lot of history that we need to, that we need to know about. And so they etched it in stone and it withstood all the, the tragedies of history. And so as we go, to, as we move to this, this uh, actually the third slide, I want you to look at, at the, this is basically the pyramid of Freemasonry, starting with the Blue Lodge down at the bottom. And then as you go through the first, second, third degree of Freemasonry, then you can go, after that, you can go two rights. You can go uh, the York right, which is not as many degrees. And, and we're not going to get into every detail of this because it's going to take so long. Or the Scottish right, which is the one on the, uh, the left-hand side, is the most popular. It goes to the 32nd degree. And then down under the arch, Roman arch, you've got uh, the different ones, and you've got uh, tied into that. You've got the Eastern star and the, and the different things that's involved in that. And we'll be doing dealing with that a little bit more uh, as we go through this. But the, up, up in the upper uh, right-hand corner, there's the, the G with the all-seeing eye in it. That is a Masonic symbol. The all-seeing eye is an Illuminati symbol, which that's a, you know, then you go into, well, we're dealing with uh, the mysteries and the, you know, the, uh, all the different things, but it is. And the G, the, the G is also a part of Freemasonry. It stands for geometry, which they used in the, the etching of the stones and building the temples and different things. But there's also in the Fellowcraft degree, it says that word, that letter can stand for God. So as we get a little further, you'll understand why I made that very clear, that, uh, that the word God is there, the, word, the letter G is there and has a reason for being there. And then we'll move on uh, a little bit further going into this. But this is just the pyramid that we're showing of, of Freemasonry and the different rites and the different uh, steps as you go up, ascending up to be uh, illuminized. Uh, again, the, the word illuminate. And as we get a little further, we'll see that when you join the lodge and you go into the lodge room, you're in search of light. And we'll cover, and we're going to use a lot of verses of scripture uh, to prove that Jesus knew this. And he knew what they were going to say and what they were going to claim. And he wrote some scriptures that means different things to me, and it doesn't take it, it doesn't do violence to the scripture, it just means because of where I've been, it means it means something to me very special. Now we're dealing with this particular uh, PowerPoint slide from the fig leaves in the garden, which Freemasonry connects their Masonic aprons, to Tubal-Cain, to Nimrod, and the builders of the Tower of Babel, the first rebellion against God after the flood, like Hiram of Tyre, who some believe seduced Solomon, uh, none of them, and of course we know that Solomon was to start with, none of them were followers of the God of the Bible. So they connect to Tubal Cain, uh, is one of their words in the words in the inner apprentice degree, uh, who was the first polygamist. He married two wives. He had the sons that, that were the fathers of the sheep herders, the musicians, 
and the metal workers, and they claimed he was the first master craftsman in metal. And, uh, and let me say, we're not going to take phone calls today, so if you if you get a question, just get your pen and piece of paper and or write that. Or email us right now on air at jsm.org, and I'll okay. make sure Jim gets to answer the question. Okay. So in, in dealing with this, we're, we're looking at people now that have joined a mystery religion that uh, claims to be, you know, and they, they, some will deny that it's a religion, but we, we can prove that it is without any shadow of a doubt. We can prove that it is a religion. That's right. And uh, because anytime you have a lodge room with an altar, with a holy book, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or whatever, and you kneel there, then it's a religion, and they can do whatever and say whatever they want to. But it's it's right. They use the phrase, we are not a religion, but we are religious. We're not a secret organization, but we do have secrets. So they'd like to talk in these riddles. Mm -hmm. They'd like to yes, give that do. impression. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they're not, and one of the things they, they say very clearly, they are not creed-bound. Well, to a Christian, we are creed-bound. We are bound by what the Scripture says, sola scriptura. We are bound by, by what the true doctrines right, of the Bible right. are. But to a Freemason, they are not creed bound. And that's one of the things that, that, that is troubling as a Christian and as a pastor to see pastors who come in and admit that they're in darkness when they're not in darkness if they have Jesus Christ. And we will be, we'll be covering that. And, and we just dealt with the, the connection to the, to the apron and the Garden of Eden, and, and, and on this particular slide, we have an apron on the left-hand side, uh, and again, I just put it there because I want to make some connections. Uh, again, when we get into this and begin to explain it, we're not only dealing with the mystery religions, but we're dealing with the fertility cult. You cannot deal with any religion, whether it's Catholicism, Mormonism, Freemasonry, whatever, without getting involved in the fertility cult. So we have the all-seeing eye at the top, and on the, uh, the left-hand side, we have the sun, which is a, the worship of the sun. And we will find out and prove that that's what Freemasonry is. It's sun worship. It's Baal worship. Then on the left-hand, uh, on the right-hand side, away from the sun, we have the moon, the crescent moon, which is the female deity. And it's interesting that, that uh, on the way to work this morning, I always listened to, to Jill and Gabe reading the Bible. Uh -huh. And they were reading from uh, Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. And I was sitting there listening to that, and I said, wow, isn't this interesting that, that as they describe worshiping the queen of heaven, praying to her, doing all the things that they do to her. And in Brother Swagger's notes, he was talking about the male-female deity. And, and uh, so we find this in dealing with that. This, the crescent moon is, represents the female uterus. And the sun worship is the male image, and they, they mate. Right. And they produce... You know, the witchcraft calls Mother Earth. We're going to find Freemasonry who refers to Mother to, to Earth as Mother Earth. We're going to see a slide, a slide as we go through this. So when you start looking at all the connections, let's look at the, the floor of the lodge. is black and white tiles. Uh, it's a balance of, do of light and darkness. It's a balance of good and evil. They didn't. The, the light that they give you that you're looking for when you join is not going to do away with all the darkness it's going to balance it between you know so then that's not christian that's not gospel let's look on the right hand side of this slide is uh is the, the grand lodge of free mace free and accepted masons of alabama i want to make another connection in the center we have again the arch of of the roman arch we have the masonic symbol but look on the look on the, the left side of this of this column we've got a pair of keys and, of course, if you know that all popes have a coat of armor, and in that coat of armor is the keys that uh, they claim that Jesus gave to Peter. And they're always there. Well, then we've got Freemasonry. They have the keys again. They, they, they have a real key up there? No. The okay. Pope, <laughs> the, the pope does. Same symbol. Yeah, same I got symbol you. Okay. Symbol. But the Pope has a set of keys okay. that he inherited from two pagan gods. Uh, Janice and Sybil. Right. 